Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams. Uh, today we're going to talk about pheasants, Jeb. How is the pheasant season looking this year? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question, Mike, and it's uh, something we've just recently answered. And unfortunately for those folks that like pheasants, for anybody that is interested in pheasants or has an interest in pheasant hunting, it's, it's going to be a rough year. Um, one of the things this year is that, we're, that we want to talk about is setting the expectations accordingly as far as what pheasant hunters can expect. And I, and I think that will, that will help with some of the, uh, maybe some of the frustration that people might come across this year. How did the pheasant uh, numbers look last year after the surveys were completed compared to this year? So when all the survey results were in, Mike, we, for the total pheasants that we had out there on our, on our brood routes, um, counted 61% less than what we did last year. And then the reproduction component was about 63% down. So a big, big change from last year, over, over half, you know, as far as, uh, you know, what we're looking at compared to, compared to last year. Let's go into the surveys, Jeb. How do you guys come up with these numbers? Well, the department has a has a long history of running surveys, and of course, with any wildlife management aspect, you know, surveys are very important to uh, to document any type of trend information associated with what those species populations are doing. And so, uh, pheasants are similar. Um, we have actually two different surveys that we do for pheasants: one in the spring, and that that looks more at just the male population at the roosters to see essentially how they got through the winter in North Dakota. Um, then the, the bigger picture for what we follow up on in the summer is the brood surveys. Those are the roadside brood counts that we do and uh, all across the state over 100 survey routes are run. Those survey routes are run at least three times by you know several different employees of the department to try to get a, a good glimpse of what that trend is doing. And this year um, it really matched up with what we heard from a lot of people that had concerns about pheasant numbers and that uh, overall that the reproduction was not good in North Dakota this year and uh, so obviously that makes a big impact on what the fall is going to look like when it comes to pheasant hunting. Let's back up here a little bit Jeb. Uh, last December we had three major winter storms. January was kind of cold. Uh, then of course this summer we had dry conditions. How do these weather patterns affect our pheasant populations? Well, they don't help, you know, there's no doubt about that. Anytime in North Dakota, when we have uh, tough winter conditions, which we did in December and much of January last year, and then it did kind of turn off, you know, turn off a little bit as far as the weather, the bad weather pattern. And, and uh, so we did get a little bit of a break come, come February, but December and January were really tough months in pheasant range and uh, in, in, the, in the parts of the state where we have a good number of pheasants. And so um, we did notice that in our spring survey that we did see a decline in, in the overall number of, of, of roosters, but we also had anecdotal information from our field staff that they weren't, weren't seeing hen pheasants um, as abundant as maybe they had in, in years past doing those spring surveys. Now again, that's just anecdotal, but it, it did end up matching up then with our, with our, springs, with our summer surveys, brood surveys. And the dry conditions were obviously tough on the reproduction. And so anytime you get those types of conditions back to back like that, a tough winter followed by really dry conditions for the hatch, uh, it's gonna make a big difference in North Dakota. But one of the things, we can't lose sight though of, of the big picture. And the big picture is that we, just, we have less habitat on the landscape right now. And, and that just, it provides us very little room for error. And we know in North Dakota we're going to have air. And what I mean by air is tough winter weather, uh, dry conditions when it comes to the reproductive you know, portion of their life cycle. Uh, uh, the, the dry conditions that we have just don't bode well for, uh, for good reproduction out there when it comes to good diverse habitat conditions would provide good insects. So it makes it very tough. But you know, when we have good habitat conditions, um, we can have the we have the ability to rebound, uh, but right now, I mean, we're not void of habitat in North Dakota, pheasant habitat, but we have a lot less on the landscape than what we did say 10 years ago, and that that gives us the ability to rebound when we have better habitat conditions. And right now, we just don't have that, and so it's it's we're going to see some swings as we as we move forward in these number of years. We can have we can have some good opportunities out there, but we also have the possibility of having more you know years like this as well. Do they rebound fast, Jeb? I mean, what can hunters expect next year at this time if we have the right conditions? Under the right conditions, pheasants do have the ability to, to rebound. There's no doubt. And, and like we talked about earlier, Mike, we had some 
we had had a couple tough things happen, which which do impact pheasant numbers. Uh, had a tough winter, had dry conditions out there. Hopefully, we don't have those back to back next year as well. But under the right conditions and habitat conditions being the being the biggest factor there, they do have the ability to come back. But um, you know, also talking about our habitat conditions out there, we. Like we mentioned, we still do have some good habitat on the ground in North Dakota, just not as much of it. And so it is going to provide some, some swings with that population um, based on some factors like weather. Um, that if we, if we had better habitat conditions, weather doesn't play quite as much of a role uh, as it does. And their ability to rebound then is, is very good if we have better habitat conditions in place. With the habitat, we have the farm bill coming up here fairly quick. Uh, what's critical in that farm bill uh, that would help these pheasants rebound? Yeah, great, great question, Mike, and great point is that in North Dakota, farm bill is very important to what conservation looks like. Um, you know, we're a privately owned state for the most part, very much dominated by private land ownership. And so those programs available in the, in the farm bill, the conservation programs are, are critical, you know, as we move forward. And one of the things that we hope to have a lot of discussions about is, of course, is CRP acres, the number of CRP acres, but also the uh, the opportunity for landowners to get enrolled in CRP. That's been one of the challenges the last number of years is that we have had landowners that are interested in enrolling in, in rolling their property in CRP, but have been turned down. And so we need to be more competitive. And yeah, it's a, it's a selfish thing from a North Dakota standpoint. I mean, obviously other states are, uh, have adjusted some things and their, their landowners are, 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 are being more successful in getting their land signed up in CRP. But um, we would like that back a little as well. We were, uh, we were very successful early on a number of years ago with having good success with getting landowners signed up. And we would like to get back to that. And uh, we know it's probably not going to be a, a perfect system getting back to that completely, but we hope to be involved in some discussions that can at least make uh, our eligibility a little bit better as we move forward in this next farm bill. Any changes in the regulations to this year's pheasant season? Uh, one of the big changes that we had, and this came from a legislative law that was put into place in the last legislative session, was the adjustment of the season opener. Uh, previously, the department always had our season set at the second weekend, the second Saturday in October. Um, now that we, we are not allowed, actually, by state law to, to open our season any later than October 12th. So um, if that second Saturday in October falls later than October 12th, which it does this year, it will, it will open on the previous Saturday, which this year is October 7th. So if you're going out pheasant hunting this fall, you'll still find pheasants. It's not like they're all gone. That's another good point too. I, you know, we've been used to some pretty good pheasant, you know, pheasant hunting days in North Dakota over the last 15, 20 years. Um, so it's going to be different for folks, no doubt about that. So again, people just uh, adjusting their expectations accordingly, having fun, looking forward to some exercise <laughs> with, uh, you know, both people and dogs alike. It's going to take a little bit of work out there, and uh, but there's still there's still going to be some opportunities for people to to have out there, no doubt. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. There are some seasons already open and some will open shortly. The sharp-tailed grouse and partridge seasons both opened on Saturday, September 9th. The early waterfall season for residents opens Saturday, September 23rd, and the regular waterfall season opens Saturday, September 30th, along with the youth pheasant season. Pronghorn firearm season opens October 6th, and the regular pheasant season opens on Saturday, October 7th, and the deer gun season opens Friday, November 10th. For Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.